everybody, and welcome to another live chart request session. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you guys here tonight, and we are very, very lucky because we are joined by the one and the only Mr. Mike Lambert from Market Traders TV. Mike, how are you doing this evening, buddy? Pretty damn good, dude. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty damn good myself, man. Thank you for asking. Um, we are going to waste no time here. Actually, you know, before we get started, let's talk about how the voting works. Um, if you, anybody, uh, if we have any new folks here this evening, the way that the voting is going to work, every ticker that we go over, that's going to be considered one round. You are allowed three votes per round. You can vote for up to three unique names. You cannot vote for the same name three times, but you can vote once per round. So three votes per round. Um, if you have tickers that you want us to review, make sure that you keep on voting for those until we get to them. Um, so yeah, with that, we're going to jump right in here. We are going to be looking at SPY first. Mike, talk to us about what you see going on on the SPY chart. Big moves over the past couple of days. So what we've done in the SPY is actually pretty interesting. We, we did a major containment break in this. So before we actually get into this, I want to say that you're, you're going to see charting that's a little bit different from a lot of other technical analysts. I do things based on price action and trend very specifically. I don't do diagonals. I don't do triangles. I don't do any of that stuff. I, I look to see where price has gone and where price should go in terms of where we are in current containment. So Starting, starting off with that, I'm going to see if things are a little bit different. So after we broke this, meaning we made, we made a new low here, we had a new containment zone in the SPY. And that is our current move. So we are here. Now, what, what the SPY is currently doing is it made a higher low off these moves. It tested the low. It tested the mid retested the low and then it's making a high so expectation is to go to our last leg of trend and our last leg of trend is this move right here so testing our next level up somewhere around here make a lot of sense if we do something of a rejection in the es overnight then testing here prior to doing this would make perfect sense as well. So can we talk about why that particular leg is the last leg of trend? So it's our last move that rejects the move of this leg of trend. So if we re remove all this shit right here. So this was our previous trend prior to breaking the low. Right. So we look at this and we retested this move right here. The move that made the high. Yep. Relatively. Right. Right. So that's our next idea of a test on our way up, which would be right here. Now it is technically already tested. And by already tested, I mean, price has gone back there since then. So you could even take it a little bit lower and say this, which is also fine. Doesn't, doesn't really matter in that regard. But um, what you would have looked at is where, where price has done things and where price can go to do other things. And so that would be our, our next major idea. So technically on a can of close, this would not be tested on an actual price action. This would be the move right here on, on SPY. And down to here once again, bounce okay. this. I think odds are in the favor of a continuation to the upside uh, to test those highs before pulling back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, down down first, then up. That that make the most sense. You think down first? Yeah. Simply because why? Seems like we're so close to that upper target. So we we break this, right? Which we're trying to do right now, mm -hmm. and currently because i'm watching the es future so i know that we're going lower <laughs> so, right <laughs> testing these <laughs> testing this does make a lot of sense first and then continuing higher okay cool 
Right on. So we're feeling pretty bullish about SPY. And, and we're feeling really pretty bullish about it because of the action that it gave us today. Right? Today yeah, was a, yeah, today was a, big, a big point. Mm -hmm. Breaking the swing is, big, is, is really big. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're going to jump to the next round here. And we're going with Apple. Not a surprise. What's going on with Apple, Mike? Let's see. Okay, Apple sort of kind of looks like the spy. And the thing about Apple is what Apple does is what the NASDAQ and the and the ES and the S and B does, right? It's it's the major, it's the major weight. So Apple made a lower low in trend, making lower highs throughout, right? Mm -hmm. So after making all time high, we broke low. And this is this is our major point right here. We held, we failed. We make low. We retested the failure, which is right here. A lot of you guys probably aren't going to understand this super, super in depthly, but after doing this, this is the retest that is expected. And then we fail again. So we make a lower low and we look back, see what they tested. They tested this properly. This right here. Um, it was it was the this move that made the low yeah right there they tested that properly right there and then they tested this low which is the move that made that low right mm -hmm. boom boom then they made the lower low which is actually the bottom the bottom swing of this move kind of like trying to start they didn't really get down there to the point to where it's like super perfect right right they they didn't kind of do that not now they're now they're going higher so if we remove all this trash where should we go now so there's two spots on apple this is already tested so we wouldn't expect that this right here hasn't been kissed yet so we would expect that now that's super close right what is what is that level to you specifically so this is the move right here our last our last leg of trend that made the low got it okay this is that move this yep. is the move that made the low got it so what what we look for next is if they get above that and now there's a right now in apple this is a no trade zone you wouldn't you wouldn't take a position what you'd take is You'd, you'd think about taking a short here. That would be an idea mm -hmm. for continuation down because what have we done, right? You, yeah, making lower lows. Making lower lows. And if they get above that, then our next spot is here. The swing it, high that made this high. Got it. That produced the low. Mm-hmm. This Got is it. the high that is this uh, this is our current our current containment, right? So where we are, what where have we gone? What have we done? This is our current containment zone right here. Can so you, we're at the we're at the midpoint. I can I can visually see what you mean by containment zone, but can you kind of define that a little bit? So the high of the trend of our local swing to the low of the trend of our local swing is exactly this. Okay. From here Got to it. here. Got so it. What has price done since then? Did we test the low? For sure. We did. Do we yep. test the mid? Yep. We're doing it right now. Yep. Right. Have we tested the high? We've not. Now, and another another key point is we haven't actually tested the mid high either, which is right here. So you can kind of think about it like as a fib. If I were to draw a fib here, we can we can do that. We haven't we haven't done those things, right? Right. And they, they all kind of line up. I'm not gonna draw it perfectly, but you, you see it. Yeah. It's 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 all it's all the same relative ratios. Can we talk about like how to build out expectation for where price is gonna go? Um aside like what do we need to see for price to either continue through those mid 
mid high high levels do you just need to see those levels gained and held yeah it's it's all about failure okay if you if you if you achieve something you want to look for a failure of something so if if apple for example were to fail this right if we were to go below this we have one more stop which would be right here which is what trend start right yeah which is trend start of this current trend right we have one more stop and then we go lower and then and then if we break this we're going to go lower and then we look back in the chart and we say okay where's our next step and we look here and potentially we look here right this this would be the first step this would be the next step um can can you kind of speak on um I know you talk a bit or you talk quite a bit about absolute price action difference mm -hmm. between price getting to a particular point and closing above or below a particular point. What do you need to see? Do you need to see price just take out a certain level, meaning get through it, even if it just wicks through it? Or do you need to see closes above or below these levels to make the decision that price is going to continue in one direction or another? So there's two schools of thought to actual trend in that regard. I am on the side of price pays and price is the most important thing. Closing and openings of candles can be determined on any time frame. Right. You can find time frames where maybe on a monthly it closed here, maybe on a weekly it closed there, right? Right. So if we if we look at Apple on a weekly, it it, it changes the opens and close, obviously, because they're on a, a seven-day basis. And then we have a better idea of okay so what did apple do here and you can see it right there right. Like if, if you understand trend you can go okay this was my buy right it's 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 very straightforward right but that's not because of open and close it's just because of price action so i'm i'm more of a, of, of a price action purist than an open and close purist because i don't really care about time unless i'm trading options because <laughs> Then you have to deal with theta, you right. know. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're just trading stock, who cares about time? Right? Like, right. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. So think about it like that. Think about it in extremes of price action, more so than open and closes. Open and closes can give you a good idea, but the good idea of open and closes is only because it did that thing. Right. And it did that thing, so other people are looking that it did that thing. But it doesn't really matter that much in, in, in any other regard. It's more so of price hitting a spot right? rather than an open and close. Right. And it's so clear on Apple, right? Yeah. You, guys, you guys see this now. Like, you know, like, hey, Mike, you're a hindsight trader, but this is obvious. Yeah. This is obvious for people that understand trend. Right all right, here. so let's let's pretend that that I don't understand trend at all. What about this is obvious for me? The move that made the low created the move that made all time high. Oops, I can't do another arrow. <laughs> One sec, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. So. So good. So this move made the local low. Mm -hmm. This move made the all time high. Yep. So after we fail the swing and we couldn't continue to make a new all time high right here, which is the move that made the high. Yep. We retest the move that started the all time high, which is right there. I think this is a really, really key thing. If you are watching tonight and you are trying to learn trend, this is like a key component of trend to be very, very mindful of. Pay attention to. Um, awesome. Thank you, Mike. Um, let's keep on moving. Let's go to the next round. Let's do what it. we got next? Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Okay. So Amazon... Let's so actually start off on a monthly. 
because when, when I teach people to do this, you should really start off the highest time frame, yearly, monthly, whatever, and see what it's done. Cool. So, so Jason, I'm going to ask you about this one. Okay. What has Amazon done here on a monthly basis? On a monthly basis, uh, failed new high. Um, let's see. It's, it looks like it's trying to hold the, or it's maybe even trading above the, the low that produced the high as well. Am I right? Yeah, pretty much. So we had this move that made the all-time high yep. right there. That, that, that was our main trend. And then we lost it. Right. Right. We lost it. We lost it right here. So after that, we didn't really test anything on a, on a monthly, you can see it on a monthly basis. We can't really see any, like, whatever this is, right? Right. We haven't really done anything. So our expectation is to test higher, or yeah. test higher to our next untested level. And that really isn't until here. Yep. Okay. That, that would be our monthly high, right? So we can zoom in. So here's our same levels on the weekly. Yep. Our monthly high has actually been tested. You can see it's right there on the weekly. And yep. by the way, guys, when I say tested, it means price has done it. So untested means price hasn't gone back to that, that specific spot. Tested means price has gone back there to say hi to it. It's like giving it a kiss. So what is Amazon doing right now? Amazon is now testing this, this swing high. Right. Which has already been tested right here. Right. We already did this. Right. This has already been done. So expectation is for it to continue higher. Right. Once it's already, if it's already tested, it kind of doesn't need to test again. Right. Yeah. It just, it just blew right through it. Right. Like so the, the, the idea of double bottoms, double tops, all that stuff, those, those things they, they don't they don't really matter to the market because the market wants to do things where li liquidity lies the market wants to go to places where people have their positions and those are generally untested levels so where would amazon go on a weekly basis actually all of this is relatively tested mm -hmm. so we, we we really need to dig in go to a daily and see where it's not so now we have a nice spot Mm -hmm. Look at the daily. Boom. And talk that's to an untested level. And that's because that's the the top of the containment trend. That's the move that made the high right here. Got it. On the daily close. So also look, when we talk about tested, look at this. Did they test this before they dumped? They certainly did. Exactly to the price. Yeah. Right? So the, that's, the, that's the major key point about testing at untested levels. They tested that. Then they went to the dumpster. So very important there, kids. All right. We're going to move on here. Next round. We could probably do a little bit more on Amazon just really quickly. All right. All right. Level. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, we'll hit the next one. Just on daily. So if they achieve this, so if Amazon doesn't reject here and they achieve this, um, then we can look here. This would be another profit target zone. And if they go above that, then, well, we have the top. All time highs, yep. Which would be this, bang, bang, bang. And I mean, since we've already tested tested it, like you said, at least we're kind of expecting price to push pretty easily through that area, yeah. Yeah, it's just smash it, and yeah. it generally does. Yeah, and uh, maybe maybe a little bit of resistance, kind of at that green box area, maybe a slight pullback, and then a continuation. Right. That's our level to achieve. So yeah. if we get above this, we should go here. Doesn't mean we will. It means we should. Right. If we, if we get above this, we should go here. 
Doesn't mean we will, but we should. But that also doesn't mean a complete beeline to those areas, right? No, not at all. Right. Okay, cool. Well, next one. Mm -hmm. All right, XOM. XLM. XOM. Exxon. X oh, Exxon. I looked at this in a bit. Oh, wow. Oof. Came right back. A, came right back to that dumpster. area. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit gross. <laughs> All right, to, to ex explain. I don't like double bottoms. Not a fan. Okay. And what did he do? I did double bottom. So, where's our weekly? Where is it at? It's right there. Yep. Um, we have a little gap to fill here. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. We have a gap to fill. And obviously, you can see it. Gap fill. Gap fill. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be a decent idea for a short. A decent idea for a short at this higher range. Mm -hmm. Now, it'd be a better short idea if we actually broke this low in the swing. So if this was lower from here, this would be a better short idea. But as it stands right now, it's not looking all that great. It does look good for higher here right now. It looks good for higher for sure. But I would be definitely taking profits in Exxon at these two spots. I would take a profit at that first gap fill and I took a profit here and I'll also be looking for a short in this range. Cool. Right there. Can you talk a little bit about gaps? How you feel about them? Um, uh, is, is kind of the standard belief on gaps generally true? It, it really, it, it really is, but they're not, it, they're not always filled. That's the thing. Yeah. So, if there's a local gap that can be filled, it will be filled. If there's if there's a faraway gap that hasn't been filled, it probably won't be. Got it. That's, it's pretty much it. So you can use them. It's the same idea as tested tested levels and untested levels, right? Mm -hmm. A gap is technically untested. Right. So price hasn't been back there since then. So we go test it. Right. That's that's why gaps are they're they're really good to look for because they're the purest of untested levels. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Never really thought of it like that, but that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. Keep it on, keep it on. Yep. All right, let's roll. Next round, square SQ. So I, I think this one smashed today. It did. Had yeah, a big it day. did. Yeah. So this. I was actually in this trade at this point right here, back of the swing, and then I, I got stopped out like right here. Um, not that that matters. But this thing is trying to get above the current resistance point, which is this. So it's trying to get above that. If it gets above here, then we have a beautiful spot to test at this and that would be a, like a DCA all the way up to here. And if it gets above that, then we have, this is tested. We have somewhere in here, probably those, this lower swing, we probably have that. So if gain test, if fail, long opportunity right around here up oh. so we had a question come in from the audience asking about how to um, discover gaps so i wanted to take a second and let you guys know we do have the gap snake indicator if you click on the uh, three dots next to the indicators button search gap snake and add that to your chart that's going to automatically highlight all the gaps on the chart for you for uh for the viewer who was asking about that all right, so 
if we gain, we're looking if, at those. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. If we gain, this is our next range of profit. Yep. If we fail this, then this is a long opportunity in this range. And again, you know, that age old question, um, if we gain here, do you anticipate some sort of slight pullback ahead of the continuation? Or do you, I mean, it looks to me like if it gains, it's going to go, right? Because it's already tested multiple times that level. It's already failed that level multiple times. So if it gains it, it seems like there's no reason to, to go back, right? Yep. Yeah. So okay. I wouldn't have a position right here unless I was already in from somewhere lower. Right. So I, I wouldn't even be considering like the the squiggles and squaggles that are going to happen in between this range. Right. Right. So eventually it it probably do this, but I wouldn't worry about too much in the in the interim. Okay. You know, because I, I I I'm not a breakout buyer. I would never do that. I'm a I buy low, I sell high, right? I'm right. <laughs> not the opposite. Or you so, sell you sell high and buy low. Well, right, a yeah. short high same, and same buy thing. low. Yeah. Short high and buy low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be concerned about price action between here and here. The, can, this achievement is is it's not guaranteed, but it's it's a pretty good chance. Can we briefly talk about why you don't buy breakouts? I don't buy, buy breakouts because I stick to a VWAP rule. Okay. So VWAP is volume weighted average price, and I look at it on a daily basis. Okay. So a daily time frame, twenty four hour time frame. If price is above the daily price, I don't go long. That's okay. that's how I treat it. If price is below the daily price, I don't go short. That's how I treat it. That doesn't mean I'm not looking for shorts above and not looking for longs below. It has nothing to do with that. It's just if price is above the daily average, I just, I'm not a buyer. If price is below the daily average, I'm not a shorter. Simply mm -hmm. that. That's it. Interesting. Like, very, can, very, very easy. Can you kind of elaborate on why? Well, it's like you go to the grocery store and you see the things in the, in the, the end of the shelves on the aisle and they have all these you know things stacked up and they're you know, all these prices of things like oh you can get apples for a buck 50 right here like all, all these amazing apples and then you actually go back to the the back of the store where the apples actually are and they're like they're a dollar 25 right why would you buy the dollar 50 apples when you can buy them for a dollar 25 over here yeah <laughs> all right that's, that's good it <laughs> So I don't buy above average. I don't short below average. Simple as that. Got it. Cool. That's an interesting tip. Um, all right. Next one. Let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? LMND, Lemonade. LMND. How's the YouTube chat going, by the way? They, they chilling? Yeah, I think they're chilling. Let's see here. How's YouTube chat? If you guys have any questions um, about these things I'm talking about, just go ahead and ask. So this thing is made in all time low and it made an all time low this week even. And it's not looking good, bro. <laughs> um, so the, the only thing that I would do on this is if it achieves a higher high above here, I would consider a long on a retest of this low. That's it. That's literally it. So we'd have to achieve this and, you know, like literally go test here, like somewhere on this. And then I would consider a long on a retest. That's it. Can we talk about why? It's, it's, it's just failing and failing and failing. Yeah. Like it's just going down and down and down. So right. why are you going to buy? Yeah. Like it's not a great spot to take a short right now if you want to do that. But shorting the bottom is also a, a terrible thing to do. Right. But you could take a short. 
right here right now <laughs> all right next one let's keep moving palantir p-l-t-r okay i'm very familiar with this one it's a very hot hot stock it is so looks, this looks the same <laughs> it, it kind of does this little doggy um it did some cool stuff can't really see um so i really liked i, I can't see it over but i really liked um i like this yep and i like this flow and i didn't actually buy this uh i was too late on it and i didn't chase i never chased the markets so um i, I didn't grab it but this was actually pretty cool because it, it tagged the low perfectly yep. then it retested it so now what we're doing is we're trying to get above the local swing and they have a lot to do in this little this little guy they have a lot to do but they get above this they have the gap yep and this this gap's actually really beautiful because it lines up with the swing test so get above there it's great um i don't know not much to say about this one if if they get above this swing they test this then you even have opportunity to buy a retest here here let me delete all this shit uh, get rid of this so if they get above here and they test this swing right there not there but right here then you have an opportunity to get long again here because that's actually a gap as well right so th there's there's a lot of opportunity in this one but it all depends what it what it does in its current spot definitely not a buyer now there'd be right. no reason to be but we have opportunity in both directions so you can short this you can take a long if they achieve etc Mike, can we take like two minutes and talk about um, about how you don't chase and not really why you don't chase, but kind of how you've developed the um, how you've developed that ability? Because I, I mean, I struggle with it. I know tons of traders that I talk to struggle with it. It's a constant battle not to chase. Um, how do you how do you maintain that commitment so it, it's it's actually a tough question because i don't press the market button i just do limit orders mm -hmm. and if the market goes to my limit fill then i you know accept it and take it and whatever obviously mm -hmm. um the other part of it is I'm very bad as a trader in adding to a winning position, which means um, if I've already taken profit, I'm very bad at adding to my position if I've already reduced it. And, and I know that's not chasing, but that's it, it's, it's, it's a more important thing because I think adding to a winning position after you've taken profit is actually more beneficial than thinking about chasing. So I only do limit orders. I have my limit set, I have my stop set, I have my profit target set. If the market doesn't fill me and the market doesn't fill me, I never click the market button. I never go click, click, click. Yep. I never do that. But the thing about chasing is also, you have to wrap your mind around adding back to your position in a winning position, which is a problem that I have. So that's another thing I need to solve with my trading. I've been trading since 1995 and I still haven't solved it. So yeah, it's if, hard. You guys, if you guys have any help, like let's, <laughs> let's get it. Yeah, turn around on the audience. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody struggles with that, man. I don't think that's, that's, you know, it's not specific to you. Um, we got a question. Uh, somebody's asking if you ever use regression channels. My guess is you do not, right? No, I, I use exactly what you see right here, dude. Yep. Price action, period. It's just price action and trend. 
And once you learn how to how to do, once you learn how to read price action trend, you're never going to need anything else. Right. <laughs> let's let's take this second to to talk about Market Traders TV while we're here. You know, you Mike, you live stream seven days a week, fourteen hours a day, right? Mike on yep. Twitch. Yep. Twitch TV, Market Traders TV, um, live every day. The the channel is always live. I'm there for anywhere between 12 and 14 hours a day chat is always live um you can always interact with chat the um the moderators the people that are vip they're all experienced traders they can answer your questions i'm there about 14 hours a day like literally seven days a week like it's kind of psycho but <laughs> we're, we're here to always answer your questions and just build the community to try to make sure that everyone can understand the market and make money out of the market because it's literally the best job you can ever have is is being a market trader and if you can understand understand the basic dynamics of it like very very simple things that are actually complex but very simple things you could make a killing and it's the only job you can have in your entire life where your income is uncapped the only limit is your own psyche. Yep. Like you can be a billionaire if you want to be in the market. And the only limit is you. And I'm I'm here every day to teach you guys to do the best that you can do just in in, in any any stock, any market, anything. And it and it all is the same stuff. It's all price action and trend. And you learn how to read it. You learn how to do it. You might not make a billion dollars, but you know, you do pretty well. Yeah, no, I mean, I can personally vouch for it. You know, we're buds now, but there was a time when I was hanging out in Twitch chat and you didn't know me from the wall. And I was trying to learn the I was at the very beginning of my learning these concepts. And you definitely walked me through quite a few different things that were that I was having trouble with. And I'm and I'm in there quite a bit still. So um yeah, if anybody watching is interested, you know, definitely come hang out in the uh, Market Traders TV Twitch chat because there's a ton of information. You know, Mike's Mike's really great about kind of breaking things down and showing you how he's seeing things, trying to help understand uh, how to how to visualize trends. So uh, definitely want to plug that. All right, we're gonna keep on moving here. Next round, what are we gonna look at? So before we go to the next one, do like do these things that we're talking about right now, like on this chart that we have right here, we have a box and two lines. Do you guys, do you guys get the idea? Like like YouTube chat, do you, you, you get the, like does this make sense to you guys? Like give, give like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Like if if it's not making sense, we can try to go into more detail. See where I'm just hanging out here in chat and seeing how many people we have, by the way. I'm not sure. 114 watching right now. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, Cameron says, yes, sir. Bread gives us a little smiley face. Jordan says, yes. Zavir, what's up? Um, you know, one uh, Nermit is asking, um, when taking positions, do you generally look at the daily chart, the weekly chart, or the hourly chart? Do you have a preference? You start a monthly, draw your levels. You get a weekly, draw your levels. Go to daily, draw your levels. Then if you really want to get deep, go to four, four hour. You don't need anything else than that on stocks. Now, if you're trading futures, you should probably ratchet it back to around an hourly to down to 15 minutes. But on stocks, Monthly, weekly, daily, draw your levels out, trade those levels, do it like that. Got it. Um, one fella, Billy's asking about the green box, what the green box means. That's green the box. level to achieve. Yep, that's where we have to gain. Mm -hmm. If Tested. we get above, go ahead. If we get above that, we should go here. Doesn't mean we will, but we should. What about um, best time frames for intraday? It's the same thing. It depends on the product you're trading. So if you're day trading stocks, meaning like if you're scalping stocks, it's the same kind of thing as futures. You, you got to go down a little bit more. 
but I don't advise doing that because you're going to get better results generally looking at the bigger swings monthly, weekly, daily, and go on that. There you go. All right, let's hit a new name here. NGG, National Grid Transco. Oops. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is this? Well, well, well. <laughs> this is very illiquid. Yeah. So you have to be careful with this. It's actually at resistance right now. Yep. I so said, you guys see this? That resistance is making a higher low. This thing could definitely go higher, but um, I wouldn't touch this. Mm -mm. And if I were to touch it, it would be in this range. Yep. And that's simply, and why is that? Well, the liquidity on the daily is, is oops. The liquidity on the daily is just, it's, it's got awful. Like, this is just terrible. Like, how can you even have a stop loss when things like this happen? Right. Like, you're just going to get kicked in the face. Yep. So, no reason. So, yeah, it's actually a short spot right now. It's actually a perfect short that it gets today. So, I would expect the lower. And I'd be a buyer in this range if I really wanted to dabble into this liquid garbage <laughs> it's really bad sorry it's all right um another question that just came in somebody's asking about bollinger bands and i know that i know that you're not really much of a indicator guy you're you're pretty much just looking at vwap right yeah if vwap is the line is the line in the sand for if it's above or if it's below whatever yeah that's it um, don't I don't do the indicator. So there is one indicator that I like on a daily, weekly, and monthly. There's one lagging indicator that I like, and that's the TTM squeeze. And Trendspider actually promotes this quite often. But the TTM squeeze combines the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner channels. When the Bollinger Bands come into the Keltner channels, it's called the squeeze. And it's a very, very interesting thing that happens. But daily weekly monthly on that only and don't take it as a signal take it as a confirmation of an idea that you already had don't just buy something because something is squeezing buy something because something is at a point in trend that's it never use lagging indicators as a reason to get into a trade use price because price is the king price is the king i think that's an important that's an important thing that kind of separates this style of trading from so many other styles of trading this is we're talking about price action here that is the key that is the focus mm -hmm. so so any any of those indicators that you guys know moving averages bollinger bands any of that stuff we're not going to be focusing on any of that stuff in this particular style of trading. Um, so with that, let's keep on moving. We got a good one next. We've got Tesla. So Tesla's been a little bit interesting lately. They broke the low twice. So we had this move that made the high right here, which is somewhere back here, but it's actually good on monthly. So this this relative move, right? So the, the this monthly swing that made the all time high. Yep. What Tesla did is they actually tested this move perfectly, which is it's so gorgeous. Yes. And and, and then <laughs> I know it's it's like it's sick once you see it once you know how to how to see it it's sick. Yes. Um. So now we have, we have a lot of stuff to think about in Tesla because it's 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 been a little bit a little bit wonky a little bit back and forth um, and a, a lot of this stuff has already been done on the way up like almost every one of these levels has been tested mm -hmm. like this one's been tested they did it right here this one's been tested they did it right here yep this one is tested right here 
Yep. So this is our current containment. So we'll we'll draw it like five. This is where we are in price, right? Mm -hmm. We're right here. So we'll zoom into the daily. And we'll see where we're at. Well, my arrow went away, but no big deal. Um, so after making this, no, there it is. So after making this low, now we're we're testing this interim swing high, which is this local trend, which made mm -hmm. this low, mm -hmm. which which tested the move that made the low. Remember, Jason, we were talking about that, like the move that made the low. Yep, it's actually that move. So we're testing that right now. If we gain this, it's pretty straightforward that we're going to go at least here to the swing high, which would be here. At least that. Now, Tesla is in a no trade zone unless you want to take a short on it. And taking a short on it is not a good idea because you're in the bottom end of the swing. So if we zoom out more, right? We don't want to really be shorting when we're at the ass end of the range of our current move. Right. right? This is this is our major move, right? We're We've we've tested the bottom of it. Now we're testing the middle bottom right now, which means what? We test the middle. If it keeps going up, we test the middle. And yep. that's going to be right here. Yep. Right? And then what do we do after that? Middle we high. Test, we test the high. And, and I mean, it, you know, like we talked about earlier, if lots of stuff has already been tested, on the way down is there need to test it on the way back up you just blast through it i'm sorry you just blast through it yeah generally just you smash through it it's, it's right. no big deal so if we get above this then tesla all the time high. yep right but you know it it could be an opportunity to take a short here because your stop loss is so is so tight that you know, if it does come back down and retest this, that would be a great profit from here to here. Mm -hmm. You could do that. But generally speaking, at the bottom end of trend, you don't want to be looking to short. You want to be looking to long. At the top end of trend, you want to be looking to short. You don't want to be looking to long. So think the opposite way that your brain does. This may be a really dumb question, but. Tesla, I mean, it's one of the most popular, most most traded names, probably of any symbols in the market outside of the indices and maybe Apple, right? Mm -hmm. um, that popularity seems like even more of a reason not to try shorting it at this point, right? It's, like, just, it's, it's just the chart, dude. It's not even that. It doesn't it's even literally it's, just the chart. Okay. The, ch the chart tells you, like, why short here? Right. Even though it says you might get something out of it, like, and like I like I described, right? You might get something out of it, but you're you're shorting the ascent of the range, so you you don't want to be doing that. You you want to be looking at the whole range, and say, okay, when it's the bottom end of the range, I'm be looking for longs. When it's the top end of the range, I'm be looking for shorts. Right. It has nothing to do with the popularity of Tesla or any of that stuff. Okay. Literally, the chart is is it's like, look, bro. <laughs> <laughs> look, this I'm, is what <laughs> I'm telling you. Right. Right. Um, another question came in asking about entries. Like, do, what are you looking for confirmation wise? So, can we take like two seconds and go back over that real quick so that. We get that answered. You're you're an absolute price guy. So if price gets to your level, you're buying. You're not waiting for the next day. You're not waiting for a closed candle, right? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in terms of Tesla here, if I if I was if I was doing something, I, I guess this may be a good example. Um, I was say, saying I wanted a long Tesla. I would be buying. I'd be buying here. And I, that would have been a, a spot where I would have bought. And I, I would have gotten a little bit of heat on, on the long. And mm -hmm. that's a spot where I would have been about, would have bought. But I probably wouldn't have even done that because my idea of, of trades is 
I risk one to make three on minimum to first profit target. And this wouldn't be a three hour trade. So I probably wouldn't have even done that. But that would be an idea of, of what I would do is I, I, would, I would take the swing low and I would say, okay, if price gets here, I'll take long and I'll have a stop somewhere around the low. Right. But that think- wouldn't that wouldn't be a three hour trade. That'd be that'd be like a one hour trade. So I wouldn't even take it. So two things to address there. The first thing is for the viewer who asked, these would be preset buys um, and and preset limit like stop losses. Everything would be preset in the system. Yes. If price gets there, they trigger and it does what it does. The yes. sec the second piece is R. And that is risk reward, right? You said for if if you're going to risk one, you want to make three, and that that is kind of a piece that I don't know how many people take into consideration when they're trading. Um, so maybe we can kind of talk about that and the importance of that for like a minute. Well, you can't really measure it um, in, in this capacity, but if if you're risking one. The idea would be from your entry to your stop would be one, right? Right. You have to measure it out. And wherever three would be, it'd be a, a multiple of that. So if we go from here to here, it'd be somewhere around be somewhere around this. Yeah. That'd be about three R. So you risk one entry to stop to make first PT at least one. Yep. That's why I wouldn't take this trade because the idea of this getting to here from here is not that great because we have this to contend with, right? right? So this would be more of like a one R trade. Yep. Maybe like 1.5, whatever that, yep. maybe two even. It'd probably yep. be two, but yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even do this. It'd be not, not a thing in my, my trading arsenal. Right on. And again, that kind of speaks to your ability to your uh, proclivity for patience, right? Like your ability to kind of sit on your hands and wait for these things to happen. If they don't happen, it's you're none the wiser. It doesn't matter. You're you're preset the whole step or the whole the whole time, all the time. So I the what the way that I teach it is every trade you take. For how much money you have in your account, you should never risk more than 1%. Right. So if you have a million dollars, 1% of a million dollars is your max risk. If you have a thousand dollars, 1% of a thousand dollars is your mass, mass, max risk. So every trade should be established where it's at least three R. So you're risking 1% of your money to make three times that money on risk. On, at first PT, and and that's that's like the easiest baseline when it comes to trading. And you should you should establish that in in your trading. You should say, okay, if I'm going to risk one here, I want to make at least three here. But you should never be risking two to right. make three. You should never be risking four to make three. You should, you should never risking one to make one. Any any of that stuff. And limit your risk because we're we're gonna have stop losses all the time, boys. It, 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 that's a part of trading. You're gonna get stopped out. And if you're not getting stopped out, you're not trading because you're right. not doing it right. So be be very very consistent with that. Risk one to make three. Never risk more than one percent of your account. Keep it that simple. And you can have hundred positions going at one time. And you'll be good. Perfect. That's, you'll be good. That is great advice. Um, let's keep on moving here. Next one. MU, Micron. Micron. It's a good company, by the way. Yeah? It is. Oops. Not T-Mobile. <laughs> By the way, when I say good company, it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, <laughs> we, we shouldn't have any bias in any of our trading. It's no. a big thing. So Micron gapped up on the daily. Uh, let's look at the weekly. 
So look who our Micron held. Yep. Imagine that. Yep. Trend start. Guys, this is trend start. Well, I drew that wrong. This is trend start right there. Micron held proper on the weekly. So proper. we look at the daily. We have a gap up. So now we actually have opportunity in Micron in this gap fill retest, which should be all the way down to here. And if we get that, the spear along idea, if mm -hmm. we get that, we have beautiful, beautiful targets. Yep. First target is this swing. Next target is gapful swing here. Yep. And target above that is the swing high, which is right there. So bang, bang, boom, boom, easy. <laughs> simple yeah. chart. That's, wow, that's a very, very simple chart. Yeah, that's nice. That's super clean. What would be your expectation? Well, hopefully Micron comes down, we can get that because <laughs> I, I would I would take this trade. Yeah, we, we want to see it fill that gap below before we extend further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Easy peasy. Next one. We're going to start banging through some of these. KO, Coca-Cola. Coco. Love so, so. Um. So we already have a line here. Um, what is Coke done? Let's Back to trend that. start. Interesting. Oh, not really. No, it, it actually did. So yeah. this this is the trend right here, and it actually did that. So it kissed the top of trend, which is interesting. Yep, that's very bullish. Um, so that that's our low. Or low swing, right? Mm -hmm. So now what they're testing is the swing that made the high, which is they literally did this week. Um, I wonder if this is going to be a short. Mm. No, this is not a short here. So we look for the move above that's untested, and that's right there. Can so, we? Can you kind of? Um zoom in a little bit on wh why excuse me why that's the untested spot so this spot right here was rejected and we mm -hmm. haven't been back there since that's the all-time high in coke mm -hmm. we haven't been back there got it See, we didn't get there yet right mm -hmm. so that would be our spot to potentially take a short or if you're already long on it Beautiful profit target and then profit target all time high after that. Got it. What um what negates that as a spot to take a short? Price gaining well, it, simply price trading above yeah, it. Yeah. If you're if you're taking a short here, you just stop here. You Got it. Out. Okay. And that'd be done. Got it. That's it. Cool. Um, question came in. Let me see. Uh, how do I decide how far out my expiration date should be? Okay, so that's a complicated question. It is and and that's when he actually the only time to ever use diagonal trend lines, by the way, is to determine options. And th this is a, it's a great thing. So, if you wanted to buy an option on Coke, for example, you draw a diagonal to this spot and you'd, you'd, you'd figure out where that trend line went. I'm not talking about trend, I'm talking about trend line, right? You figure out that where that spot is in the, in the time in the future. So this would be June of, what is that? This June year. Of, yeah, this year. Yeah, this year. So that, that would be an idea of, of an option that you could take. Interesting. I have never in my life seen that done that way it's i've never ever time you should ever <laughs> use diagonals dude is to to draw out time the only time you should ever do it interesting why where did that where does that concept come from i mean it me. makes a lot of <laughs> sense for <from> me dude <laughs> but, <laughs> that's crazy i've never ever heard that i don't know if, if anybody in chat's ever ever seen or heard that before i well if, if you understand trend it makes sense right 
there's yeah, a good sense. chance it it takes this amount of time to probably get there because these are the things that are that it's doing. So it's taking this long to get here. So it's right. taking this this long to get here, right? right? So that's your option idea. Interesting. Cool. All right. Learn something new every day. Um, <laughs> or or twenty things if you're talking to you. Um, next thing. Next name. Let's see where we're at here. Dash. Dash the crypto? No, dash the uh, DoorDash. Dash. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God damn. Yikes. Yeah, yikes. I use this company every day. Oh, fuck. <laughs> mm, God. Um, uh, can we go on to the next? <laughs> Why? Well, this is a toilet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> This is really bad. Okay, I'm so sorry for it, anyone that's on Dash. Why is it bad? Let's talk oh, about God. why it's bad. Okay, so there's one saving grace here. It's gained. <laughs> Ooh, this is really terrible. So it, it's it's gained this local swing. Yeah. So you do have an opportunity to take a long at this gap fill here. Okay. This is gap fill plus trend. Besides that, this is yeah. This is a, this is a toilet inside of a dumpster. <laughs> yeah You're, you do not mince your words sir I, well it is what it is dude the chart yeah. tells you right you know i mean it it's important to understand why things are you know bad ideas right like if you can look at something and just know right off the bat hey i'm not even what like what would you need to see in order to think this wasn't a bad idea what would this chart need to look like to you i mean well, I, I would. I, guess I would. That's a I would question, take. But... I would take this. I would take this along. Okay. I uh, no joke. Like th this is actually valid. Yeah. Okay. So pull back a gap fill, long. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Okay. And but then where you, would you? You don't let it go any lower. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Because it clearly wants. It clearly likes to go lower. Mm -hmm. uh, where would be your targets on it? So it would be here. Same idea. Yeah. Swing high. Um, above there, it would be the swing low. Above there, it would be the swing high. And that's tested. So then we go here. Right there. There you go. All right. Whoever's in dash, snapshot that. If if it goes if it breaks down below that low that eighty dollars just go ahead and no I, I should I should probably remember this because I would I would take this what what is that eighty bucks yeah yeah I would take that like with very low expectation but right. I would take that right <laughs> all right so we are we are an hour in here um how are you feeling Mike how we doing we've got, I mean everybody's still around. You want to keep moving? How are we doing on YouTube viewership? Uh, doing good. Yeah. 140 folks hanging out with us. So nice. If you're down to keep jamming on these, I'm down to keep jamming on these. Oh, I'm I'm down, dude. Let's go. All right. Let's keep on moving. Next round. Shop. Shopify. Well. <laughs> Do we have another toilet? <laughs> did we test a monthly? That's a thing here. So did we? Oh, perfect. Whoa. Did we test a monthly, Jason? Look at that. Beautiful. Did we test so, a monthly? Okay, so this is, this, is, <laughs> this is a really important theme that I really, really want viewers to be like to drill in their heads because this is something that I've had to drill in my head too. Trend start. Let's talk about where the trend start is. The trend start is where the white line is, right? That's the trend start. That's the low that brought us to the, the all-time high. high. Right. And so what have we done? We've pulled back all the way back to that trend start. Very, very important. This happens all the time. We see this on every time frame. 
put this in your arsenal of things to remember to look for if you're if these are new concepts to you because this is really really important and and clearly it happens all the time this is I, the market right right it literally is this yes. like shopify is the perfect example of this is a monthly jason yeah it's a can monthly we, can we talk about why this happens it's 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 the way the market works so the reason is it's very in depth when it comes to market dynamics of supply and demand and where where market participants are but not going to, like super deep dive into that it's just there's a reason why that you don't really need to care about too much but if you understand how to see it and guys like if you can't see this, like, let, let's be real. Like, you, you're not looking at a chart properly. <laughs> but the, there's a reason why a lot of people were there. There's a reason why a lot of people got out of there. And there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people bought there. Right. And it's, it's just the way the market moves. The market moves. You could even look at this a one-minute time frame. And you're going to see the same stuff over and over and over and over. Trend start, top, failure, gain, either way, whatever it is, back and forth, back and forth. And this, like Spotify is, you could, you could print this out and put this on your wall, right? Like this is perfect. Right. Hey, 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 boys, you want to see trend start? This. It's right here. Right. It's literally this. So where's it going to go if it gains, Jason? Uh, I mean, I would at least look at the, where is it? It's like 20, somewhere like towards the end of 2020, kind of that pullback low. I'd be looking at that low. Yes, that one. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. Because <laughs> that, because that's the level that failed that allowed us to get back to the trend start. And it, it gives us a whole range right here. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Easy. Then where above there? Where above there? Well, that I guess that's secondary low. Yeah, right there. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. And then where? And then where above that? Like, guys, this isn't that hard. That is, well, <laughs> well, hold on. I mean, it. I understand what you're saying that it's not that hard. It it when when broken down like this, this makes more sense than anything else makes sense. And I and I'm just learning this stuff. I mean, I'm full disclosure, like I'm really new to these concepts. I've only been learning these things maybe the past six months or something like that. And learning this stuff totally changed how I trade. It totally changed how I look at charts. It, it, it forced me to pull a lot of indicators off charts. Like I just look at things differently because this makes so much sense. Um, but if you, if, if you've never seen this before, if you've never had anybody kind of walk you through this before, it would be easy to not see, you know, like, well, you wouldn't even know what you're looking at. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like reading so, a foreign language. Right. Right. So, so then that kind of pulls me back around to, you know, again, plugging your Twitch space, market traders TV on Twitch. Mike is in that room 14 hours a day. He's in there all the time. He's going through these concepts. He, you know, if you have questions about trend, go hang out in Twitch chat with Mike. He will answer this stuff for you. Um, I, it's been profoundly helpful for me for sure. Uh, and I imagine it could definitely be helpful for many other traders as well. So, and guys, and guys seriously, th this is not like just random lines on charts, like looking at highs and lows. It's really, truly how the market works. Right. The market does these things. Then it does it for a reason. And once you can understand how to dissect that, you're going to be a better trader. Well, as right. long as you can click the button. I have a problem with that. <laughs> right, that's a whole that's a whole other set of set of worms that we don't need to get into this evening. Um, but let's keep on moving. Let's go to the next one. We've got CNC Centene Corporation. All right. Oh, uh, it's all-time high. Can't do anything with it. So the only thing you do with an all-time high, dude, 
is you, you obviously don't buy it. If you're already in the trade, you look at a fib, and I don't think I have the fib set up on this. Yeah, I don't. Maybe I can edit it. Uh, you go to properties. Properties. Yep. I want to just add the, some levels. The I want to do the one two seven two, the one four one four, but you can um, change them. Just add them in there. Okay. All right. One two. Why one two seven two and why one four one four? One. Actually, I, I fucked I fucked that up in my brain. Um, <laughs> One, is it one two seven? Yeah, one two seven two one four one four. Sorry, I don't mean to curse. No. Um, my bad. One four one four. Um, they are actual fibbles. Okay. Oh oh <laughs> oh oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's clean. Um, yeah. So that would be a profit target. So it'd be profit target, profit target. Um. So the one after that would be the one six one eight and we can add that right here so next pt would be 94 17. cool that's how you do breakout high profit targets on a chart cool easy easy peasy all right keep it on moving well one thing i didn't do is i didn't explain oh. why this is the, why this is actually the fed okay yeah go ahead so when you when you look at breakouts, you want to look to see at the containment zone that you broke out from. So this is our trend range. This is what we broke out from, right? You wouldn't right. really draw it from here, even though you could. You could do this exact thing, exact same thing here and draw it like that, but you wouldn't do that. You look at the major range that you broke out from. That's where you draw your fib, top down to the bottom. One two seven two one four one four one six one eight. Boom boom boom. Cool. Awesome. All right, Facebook. What a great company. I wonder what you're going to say about this. <laughs> Dude, you never want to have a bias. Oh, look at that trend start. <laughs> oh, imagine. You never want to have a bias when it comes to charting and trading. And right. the thing is, the thing is, we're all humans, right? We all have these issues. Right. I hate Facebook, but look what Facebook did. Oh my gosh. Right. Did it touch the move? One of the moves that made the low after breaking this, the high swing of it. Oh, is that, is, is that a DCA range for longs? Oh, oh my God. Right. Holy shit. <laughs> right. And so, it's, and then, Targets above 250, that yeah, kind of pullback area. Jason, you know it. It's right here. Yep. It's 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 all the it's all these things, just the same thing over and over and over again. Right. And above here, it'd be a little bit wonky. You'd have to get to see all this is tested. Yeah. So we'd have to zoom into a weekly to actually get a little more grang art tested right there. You no, know, it's tested. Tested means. Price, price came back there. and kissed it remember so, that hold on that's important i know we've said it like 10 times tonight but if price tested means that prices come back to a particular level and tested it touched it come back to it it could be from it could be from a downside back up and test it could be from an upside back down and test yep. either way testing means prices come back to a previous level yep that's what so, tested means Above here, this is actually tested too, but I would still take this as a profit target right there. Yeah. Even though that's tested, I, I would still take it. And our last untested level is this very high. Right here. And then it'd be all time high above that. So now, now on the weekly time frame, we've clearly started establishing like a, a, a trend change, right? We've, We've taken out those lows that brought that high. We're Not starting those. it. We're starting it. We're starting it. Yeah. We haven't gained shit. Right. We have to gain this, actually gain the weekly and say this is a trend shift. But we've 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 started it right here. Right. So we, we gain this, we test here. Right. That's it. Cool. All right. There you go, guys. Um, keep it on, keep it on. FC 
FPT, Four Corners Property Trust. Never heard this one. Oh, um, interesting. This looks like something I just wouldn't touch. Yeah. Uh, it, it's no big deal, but this is a very range bound thing. Yep. You could, if there's options on this, you could probably trade options on it that are range bound, meaning right. you trade options that if it breaks as high, you lose money. If it breaks as low, you use money, lose money. What I mean is there, there's options strategies where you can do like a straddle or something like that. Yeah. Where you make money if it stays in range. But besides that, this is this is kind of kind of trashy it's just nothing that it's just yeah it's, it's, it's nothing just, there <laughs> it's, it's it's whatever like it's it's really not interesting now they could go test here this being like the next spot to test right but besides that not not interesting okay moving on microsoft msft Microsoft is way better than Apple, by the way. You Apple nerd. <laughs> um, so Microsoft no did break. <laughs> no bias. So, <laughs> Microsoft, Microsoft broke the low. <laughs> Microsoft did break this low, so we lost yep. trend here, but we did yep. technically close, <laughs> close above it um, on the swing. So, you know, if you guys know Polly, then Polly would say this is a game. And. If we do continue gaining here, we have a profit target in this swing, which would be right there. Yep. Um, obviously, this is a no trade zone. You could take a short on this. That not that might not be that bad considering we we lost this low. Technically, we lost this low, and you could take a short there, which would be bottom middle. And our idea of profit target on that short would be this swing high. So you could do that. Um, if it does come back down and retest this range, you could take a long on that swing. And next profit target above there is, well, fuck, it's right mm. here. It's all the way up here. Yep. Which is huge. Mm -hmm. So two ideas. You could short this, the very tight stop, targeting this. You could also long this all the way down to here makes it three ideas actually Oop, not there right here yep and yeah so this would be a a long range of break this is a short range right here where it is right now and if break the swing then profit target up top is profit target still up there if we come all the way back to that green area absolutely yeah okay Cool. Keep it on, keep it on. We are on round 20. Keep uh keep these coming, guys. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us. Uh this is awesome. Um, next one, U R N M. Urine. <laughs> what was it again? Sorry. U R M N. U R N M. Oh, two N's. Okay. Sorry. No. U R N M. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. We'll get there. Well, interesting. So this thing made a higher swing high in the circle swing and tested the move that made the high. Mm -hmm. what, what I mean by test the move that made the high, test the move that made the high right here. That is a trend test. Yep. As you can see right there. And then it's came back down and tested top of range which is can, a little bit weird can we if, while my while my brain's on it can we talk about first tests and the importance of first tests so the 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 first the first touch of the level well so would that be considered like a first test of that move that made the high yeah absolutely right here right so in first tests what do they have a tendency to do reject right or e e either reject or, ach or achieve which doesn't make the answer great but it's generally reject right. so that's to the bottom side and it's to the upside 
Right. But you notice this this would absolutely be a poly level. I know you're a poly guy. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. There's absolutely it would draw this like 500 times right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 literally perfect. Yeah. Um, little little bit con confused about this test. I think it was a little bit an over extension probably if we zoomed in uh -huh. this would make more sense but uh -huh. um i don't have anything here like what this thing is doing right now doesn't really make much sense we can zoom into a daily um yeah it's the same thing kind of like probably no, gonna go gap fill and dump no trade and zones it, it, yeah for sure so it goes fills this gap dumps down maybe test here then goes higher but I, I i guess you could say that that's an idea like if you let's see well at the very least you're giving some containment for stops you know i we don't know where this where where they are you know in yeah the trade. probably stop here and then you look for a profit target which i don't think this would be 3r but you'd be looking for this maybe that might be 3r it's probably like two and a half r so maybe you could do that, but for for where it is now, if you're already along, I would take a PT here. Yep. A PT here, and then I'd look higher, which would be a lot higher actually. Mm -hmm. Be right here. Yep. So that's All that right. one. Cool. Next one. Where are we at here? Hold on. Did I just miss that? Okay, ABBV. Oh, this one's this one I believe is new highs. It is breaking out. It's been absolute ripping. Yeah. So I don't think there's going to be anything we can do with this. Mm -mm. Um, we can't even take a proper fib because this fib. No, we actually can. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Oh, 1618 nice. 618 at 165. If you're long, PT 165, a little taste. That's all you got. Okay, cool. Um, next one looks like we, I did miss one. SoFi, S-O-F-I. And Mike, we've got quite a few new viewers in the house. So if we can... Um, when you're going through this, let's break down again, kind of the basics of trend. Let's break down why we're drawing lines, where we're drawing them. Just like, keep this thing as simple, break it down as simply as we can break it down. I'll do my best. <laughs> so this SoFi looks like it's an all time low, right? Am I correct? Yeah, it is. So this thing is in a struggle bus. Um, we might have to choose a different name to break these things down on. The, this looks terrible. Uh, hopefully you're not long on this. If you are, um, sorry, but um, this is even already tested, but I would I would get out there and it, if it gains the swing and by gaining the swing I mean if it gains this range sorry if it gains that range I would look at the next swing up which is here to here as a spot But can besides we, that, this really doesn't look good. Can we talk about the specifics of the candle that you're drawing those lines on and why you're drawing them there? Um, sorry, I know we talked about this pre-show and it, it didn't do what you told me to do. No, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm. We've just got a lot new, a lot of new people here, and and you know, like I said, these concepts are they make a lot of sense, but. If you ha if you've never seen this before, this is completely foreign. So, yeah. So looking at the bottom of the range of the move that made the low, 
which is actually this right here. So we made a high swing here. So we, we made this low, right? We come mm -hmm. down, make this low, come up, make a swing, we reject basically perfectly. Mm -hmm. And we make a new low, right? right? So it's this move right here that made this low, this yep. little move. That's where you look right. Well, it's not there. It's actually here, right there. So that, that's the next level in trending it above. And the reason why that's the level that we're interested in is because that's the level that was lost. That's the level price broke through to bring us down to the new low, right? Exa exactly, exactly. And if we gain this, then we look at the next, the next move up that did something. Right. And then it's, it's not going to be a line. It's just going to be this. Right. right? It's, it's going to be th this whole range right here. Mm -hmm. Right. All the way up to there. Cool. Yeah. So for anybody who's just joining us, um, if, if we, if you're still kind of like not completely understanding why Mike is drawing lines where he's drawing, uh, drawing them, maybe you don't completely understand these concepts about trend two bits of advice. First is watch this when, when we're done here this evening, we're going to upload this. This is going to be, you'll be able to watch this 10 times over if you want. Watch this from the start because Mike does go over quite a few of these things early on. Um, the second piece is Mike uh, is live every day, about 14 hours per day on Twitch on his Market Traders TV channel. He teaches this stuff day in and day out. Um, so if you have questions about trend, definitely go hang out in his Twitch channel. It's awesome. He's very, very... Um, very, very helpful with, with these sorts of things. And I, I personally was there, right? I've, I, there was a time when none of this stuff made any sense to me completely foreign. And Mike definitely walked me through these things as well. So, um, just know that he's available every day to, to kind of go over questions that you have. Now um, I'll answer any questions, by the way, guys. And the thing about training the markets is understanding that the markets are not random. The markets move in trend. The markets move, the, the way that price action moves, it goes from test to test to failure to failure. So if it fails, it, it goes to the next spot. If it gains, it goes to the next spot, you know, which is a gain is technically a failure as well. So you have to look at the market in, in, in a structured basis and the market tells you exactly what it's going to do. And a lot of people don't understand this. And it took me, I mean, I started trading in 1995, by the way, guys. And I didn't realize this until I met, I met a dude about four years ago who said, you know, like, look at price action. I'm like, what do you mean you look at price action? He's like, what's it, what's it actually doing? And, he, and he, he walked me through it. He said, it goes from here to here, then it goes from here, goes from A to B, then it goes from A to B. Now, I'm not talking about Elliott waves or any of that garbage. <laughs> it, it literally goes from point A to point B to retest. And then it makes a decision whether or not it's going to fail. And that's that's how we make money in the market is we, just, we determine where we can take longs, where we can take shorts. And the failure level is our stop loss. If it fails, we take a stop. We accept our loss. If it doesn't do that failure, we make profit. And that's literally the way the market works. And it's, we're talking about any ticker, any ticker, except for the, the least liquid garbage that you're looking at, potentially. But all the liquid stuff, all the things that, that, that have many, many <clears throat> market makers and bots at them, they all trade the same. It's all A to B, B to A, either gain or fail, whatever. And once you learn to see it, you can never unsee it. That's the greatest thing about the markets. And that's what I try to teach every day. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. So please, yeah. Anybody who wants to learn more about these concepts, please spend some time in Market Traders TV Twitch chat. We got a question from Nermit asking, um, when there's a breakout on the daily or weekly, how do you go about taking positions? Do you take it right away next day or wait for some type of confirmation? Nermit, we have predetermined buys 
everything is preset based off of these trend levels. So if price gets there, it's a buy or it's a sell. And that's, that's predetermined. There's no confirmation that's necessary. It's just price got there because that's the level that was deemed the place to buy or sell. If you're a breakout trader, you're a losing trader. <laughs> I'm sorry. He said it. He went there. And it's totally true. You can make money doing breakout trades and people do like right. people make a lot of money make doing breakout trades but in general if you're a breakout trader you're a loser right i'm not saying you're a loser as a person you're just going to be losing money most often right and can we explain very very briefly why that's the case well you never want to be buying above average you never want to be shorting below average that's the easiest thing to think about you, you have the idea of where average price is and you stay structured on that. If price is above average, I don't go long. If price is below average, I don't go short. That's it. And I, and I position myself accordingly within trend. Right. I just, and I just don't break those rules. Easy. Easy. All right, let's keep on moving here, Mike. How are you feeling? We're we're a half hour over time. How are you doing? How many people we have in, in YouTube? We got uh, 175. Well, let's let's pump that up. Where All where right. you kids at? All right, let's keep it moving. We're gonna keep moving. Um, NVDA, Nvidia, Nvidia. Hmm. So NVIDIA is pretty interesting. Um, I don't like any of this. <laughs> but it did. Why? Why? It, did it, it did do trend start how many times now, Jason? Oh, yeah. Like six. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of gross. Again, but, so uh, like, again, folks, please look at this. Trend start. Very important. Trend start. Where did price go back to? Trend start. The beginning of the move that brought price to the high okay continue trend Great. start that's what jason's talking about this is the move that made the high it's done it one two three four five six times <laughs> exactly what jason said right so now the one redeeming feature about nvidia is it made a swing high above this local swing that made the low mm -hmm. so we have this to think about so what's nvidia gonna do it's probably going to retest this swing. Hold on, hold on. Can we slow it down for just a split second? Can we slow it down? You said made a new high against the, the previous swing high. Let's talk about what that is. Okay, previous swing high in green. Yep. Right, and we've gained that. We've, we've traded above it. Technically gained that now on a daily basis. Okay, cool. Right there. So... That means if we gain, which is, this is a failure, but so when I say failure and gain, they actually mean the same thing. So we failed to maintain the downtrend. We, right. we gained it, right? We, so it's a, it's a gain of the swing. So where are we going to go? Probably here. Right. Now, where are we going to go above that? If they gain this. And by gain, I mean, if they get above this, where are we going to go? Are where's the next me? spot? Yeah, I'm asking oh, you. Where's the sorry, next spot? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, That's like, all good. Uh, like January 13th-ish. It'd be right here. Yep. Right. And why, and, and why is that? That's the last swing that took us down our current price containment. Right. That's the high of this move of our current trend. Can I ask a, maybe another dumb question? Um, obviously, we're still clearly in a downtrend, right? Like on a big time, on a big time frame. Mm -hmm. At what point is this downtrend negated? At what point have we really officially changed trend? Well, if we're going to be like super nerds about it, we can yes. say when we get above 50. Okay. I, I don't have 50 on here, but let's, let's add 50. Now I'm, I'm, I'm not a big, oops, son of a bitch. I'm not a big <laughs> advocate of, of this as being a thing like bearish or bullish in terms of trend, 
but if we add um if we add 50 here it should be there the reason i ask is because like when you're in a downtrend you want to be looking more like the 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 normal trade to take or like the more logical trade to take is a short bias trade, right? You're, you're wanting to look, you're wanting to short into strength if you're in a downtrend and you're wanting to long into pullbacks, you're wanting to long into weakness when you're in an uptrend. Mm -hmm. At what point do we see, at what point do we shift our focus from shorting into strength to longing into weakness? I guess that's like, I, I, I I'm never at that point other than if you're at the lower. So it's, it's, let me, let me back up. If you're, okay, let me get rid of this. <laughs> you look at the overall trend of, of containment, right? right? If you're at the bottom end of it, are you looking for shorts? No, you shouldn't be. You're looking for longs. Right. If you're at the top end of it, are you looking for longs or are you looking for shorts? shorts right and, and that's that's it so you notice on that on that fib that we just drew now th this is this would be our oops this would be our um technically above 50 is bullish and below 50 is barrel like i don't agree with that stuff okay it's it, it's, it's literally this you get above this you're going higher right it's not the 50 right Right, and, and why? And, that's and why exactly? And why exactly is that? Because that, that's that's the trend leg that took us down. Right. Because it's it's literally this move. It's the reason why we got here. Is the expectation if we get above that area is the expectation a continuation back to the upside, or is the expectation a, re a pullback to test those lower levels? Well, the Fib tells us right here. It's one of the times where the fib actually says, hey, look, where are we going to go? So the idea on NVIDIA is if we get above this, we test. Right. And then we make a decision, which would be back to here, or we go higher, which would be to here. Right. Right now, this looks good for hire. That doesn't mean it's a buy. Right. Where would I buy NVIDIA? Probably a test of the low that brought it to where it is now. It'd be here. Right. Can you can you draw the line from the candle that we're talking about just so that everybody is clear on that? Oh, shit, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I know you told me to do that. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's this one right here. Yes. Okay. Important, important to know like what you're, what you're specifically what like the candle that you're referring to. It's it's just super super helpful to see that. Well, it's it's also beautiful too because you have a stop loss, right? And then you have a three hour trade, which you can just you know like mentally visualize to to right here. Right? Well, you can use. I mean, we have the position drawing tool that you can use to actually measure it out. Well, it's the two under the fib. Do you, oh, right I can do that. Yeah, yep. This. Oh, so here we go. So I can do this. I can oh. drag the the middle one. And yep. This one. This one needs to go down. Oh, wait. never mind. We we don't need to do that. It's it's all good. But it, it's the same idea. You can see that this is at least a three hour trade. You can, you just visualize it. Yeah, you could see it right. Cool. All right. Hopefully that's helpful for folks. You can also, by the way, on that uh, position drawing tool, you can create alerts on all of those lines too. So you could like have preset alerts for your buy. You could have preset the alerts for your stop, preset alerts for your target, all that stuff. Pretty awesome. I use those constantly. They're so helpful. Okay, Mike, you want to keep moving? Mm -hmm. Cool. Next round, G-I-L-D. Gilead. Okay. So where are we at here? 
This is a dumpster fire, it appears. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we've lost swing, failure, failure, failure. Mm -hmm. And now we're at a double bottom on the monthly. So our last move that made a low is actually this swing right here. Yep. I'm about to test that. Um, yep. I, I wouldn't take a long there. I would wait for the move that was the previous all-time high, yep. which was this. And that is way down. Yep. And that one's simple. What would get you long? This. That, that sounds very weird. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> okay, but what about upside? What about upside targets? Like what if price, what if price, you know, turns around here? I need to gain the, the high that brought it down. A, a gain of I need to see a gain of this. Oops. A gain of the swing. Yep. And then we could consider taking along this run of the swing. Got it. So it would need to go above. So this would need to go above this, probably test somewhere around here, mm -hmm. which is actually perfect. Mm -hmm. And then we can consider taking something here. Cool. Yeah, so hopefully hopefully this is helping everybody. Like Mike is thinking through multiple different scenarios here. Um, and I really would encourage everybody to like take a step back. If you're if you're having any trouble in your trading, you're not really sure what to do, whatever, like take a step back and think through things the way that, that Mike's kind of going through these, like he's planning out both trades in both directions, bears trades, bullish trades and, and letting price action come to him as opposed to just, you know, hitting the buy button because he thinks it's going to go up or hitting the sell button because he thinks it's going to go down. I think it's like really, really important. I know that's some basic stuff to say, and I, I have trouble with it all the time. I still constantly have to like pull my finger with my other hand off of the buy button, you know, like, ah, no, hold on. Wait, it's not doing anything that you're you, you've had planned. So like making these sorts of plans is, is so, so helpful. Um, and I just cannot stress that enough. So the thing about training boys is there is there, there are so many tickers that you can have positions on. There's literally thousands of things you could do in any given day. And you need to have patience. Yes. Because if you're looking at one thing, like saying, oh, okay, I want, I want to get a position in Apple, right? I want to get a position in Tesla, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what ticker you're looking at. There's another thousand tickers that could be a, a billion dollar banger for you that you're not looking at. So have patience. If something doesn't look good, if it's not the time to do it, don't do it. Just go look, go look for other stuff. And that's a big thing about community. Like the thing we do on Market Traders TV is we share charts with each other. Like, hey guys, look at this. Look at ADP, look at fucking blah, 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 whatever. Like look, look at all the things. And the more eyeballs on charts, the better opportunities you're going to, be presented with because you're going to see stuff after you understand the 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 simple ideas of price action trend you're going to see all these other people going hey look it's a trend start hey look this is a trend start and then screw looking at apple like who gives a shit like it doesn't matter like apple's not going to make you money right now this other thing will right so do that thing right right super important all right, next one, Mike. Let's keep on rolling here. XBI. XBI. Biotech ETF. I don't know if I've ever looked at this. Ooh. Um, okay. It's a monthly. <laughs> Trend start. Wow. That's <laughs> actually super cute. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 so they kiss the weekly right there. And now they're going for it. Um, that's tested. So if they gain this, if they gain this swing right here, then you're looking at the next swing up, which is this. 
Exactly. Right. And I mean, my gosh, you're looking at this too. That's a, I think so it's a big move. You wouldn't that, consider that already tested? No. So th this one is the move. This is the low of this containment. So this is what was broken right, right here. Uh huh. Oops. I'm sorry. God damn it. Right there. That uh, was what was broken. Right. So this this is the test. The last test is spot of this of this top. Uh huh. So above there, we even have this. Well, what I mean, I'm actually referring to like uh, two candles back after uh, the high, the high that brought the low. Yeah. You're right talking there. about this? Yeah. No, no, no. So this hasn't been revisited. So you see the, this spot right here? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe on the daily it has. Let's see. No. Um, It has. It was right there. Oh, okay. It actually, it actually was. And, but, but it wasn't right here. Right. right. Yep. So it, it didn't do it, but this is tested. I would still take that as a profit target though. Yeah. For I sure. would take that. I would take that. And then I would take, oh my God, that's so close to, yeah, I would, I would still take this. And are you, you're, of course, you're not a buyer right now. Where are you a buyer back at the beginning of the. So I'd be a buyer on a gain of this i'd be a buyer on a retest of here yep hopefully so. you guys are starting to kind of see the trend with where where we're where he, he's looking for price to get to and then where he's looking for it to come back to to actually get into a long trade because i mean every single chart that we've gone over they've been different setups but they have all pretty much looked very similar. Like the plan has been very similar to on a lot of them. All right. I, Mike, I, I, hopefully this makes sense. Like Twitch, uh, Twitch chat, YouTube chat. If you have any questions, <laughs> like hopefully this, <laughs> I would say Twitch chat. If, if, the, if this doesn't make sense, so like ask questions about it and I'll do my best to explain. So we have time, Mike, for one more. Okay. And... It is Fubo, F-U-B-O. Oh, God, I already looked at that today <laughs> on my stream. It was not looking good. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know about this one. We'll see what we see now. Oof. Oh, boy. Yikes. Yeah. So a lot of people are really hyped on this one. Um, we haven't gained anything. So all we've done is we've lost, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So we actually need to gain where it's at right now. We have to gain this. Yep. If it gains that, we have an idea of testing here. But this is not a buy area, right? right. If it gets somewhere above this, meaning this, somewhere above the stop. <laughs> because somewhere above this right then we can look at an idea of taking a long at the low right right there yep and that would be our target and that that would be a very good trade right but besides that it's it's just dog shit <laughs> right on does well, that Mike, make sense? Like, like seriously, guys, like you get, it's the same, like Jason just said, it's the same thing over and over and over. Like you, you test, you fail, you gain, you retest. It's the same thing. Trend is trend. That's right. how the market works. Well, I can speak from some personal experience. Um, I did not get this even early on i did not get this very quickly it took me time and i'm still figuring it out so it would not surprise me personally if people are still scratching their heads a little bit on this but that's what your twitch channel is for um so please guys if this has been enlightening for you if this has been helpful if this has piqued your interest um take some time go hang out in the market traders tv twitch chat it's it's Mike is there all the time. Um, that's going to be your best bet for kind of digging deeper into these concepts 
as you guys can see, he's hung out with us for an additional hour here and gone over, you know, tons of different charts. Um, so he clearly is willing to spend the time and, and go through these ideas. So um, take the time, go hang out in the Twitch chat, Market Traders TV on Twitch. Go hang out there, talk to Mike. Um, Mike, man, this has been so awesome. It's such a pleasure to have you on. It's such a pleasure to learn this stuff directly from you. Um, I cannot thank you enough for being here. We're really, really happy to have you and definitely want to do this again very soon. We're going to do it for sure in the future. And Jason, honestly, I am so proud of you in your progression. Like you've just, just in the last couple of weeks, you've, you've, you've become a, a, a guy that was asking questions that didn't really make sense. So now <laughs> you're like, boom, dude, you got it. Like yeah. you're, you're, you're going to be an all-star dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still learning, but dude, we're always learning. Right. And, that's, and, and I'm always here by the way, boys. Um, And like I mentioned this earlier in our Twitch chat, if you see a moderator or anyone that's VIP'd, you can ask them questions and they're going to give you good answers the same way that I'm going to give you the answers. Like, all, all of our team that we have on Market Traders TV is is very, very, very good people. And we're there 24 hours a day. I'm there for about 14 hours a day. But the chat's always there. So it, you can just ask the, ask the folks in the chat, say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And if if they're a moderator or a VIP, they're, they're going to answer you properly. If it's just a random chatter, just be aware. <laughs> Could be a random troll. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I appreciate if you guys would join us. So um, thanks again. I, lo I, I love doing this type of stuff. I actually, this is kind of like one of the things I want to do in my life is teaching people to make money in the markets. And we're doing it, dude. Yep. We're doing it. Yep. Yep. So again, Mike, uh, thank you again so, so, so much for being here again. Market Traders TV on Twitch. Please go hang out in that chat. Talk to Mike. He will help you with your trend questions. If you guys enjoyed this, um, you know, please, once it's uploaded, share it, uh, talk about it, retweet it. Um, next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, we are going to do another one of these with our good friend Danny Naz, the pup of Wall Street. So uh, that's going to be super fun. Can't wait to hang out with Danny and do this. Uh, and again, Mike, can't wait to do this with you again. Thank you again so much for being here. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. Thank you, everybody who stuck around for an additional hour. This has been awesome. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening, and we will see you next time. Thanks, bros. All right, guys. Bye.